Hello and uh, welcome to Beautiful Literature with me, Teacher Martha. I am so glad that you're here. Thank you for joining. It's a great honor for me that you have chosen to just uh, look at this, what we have at uh, Beautiful Literature. And uh, so today we are looking at chapter 11. We are, we have come all the way from chapter one. We are now in chapter 11 of the Fathers of Nations. And uh, I am happy that you could be part of this. And uh, if you haven't been able to look at the previous videos, I want to encourage you to kindly just have a look at them so that you're able to get the flow of events and previously we did chapter 10 and uh, we were looking at um, how the team that is behind the scenes preparing for the summit was going on and we saw uh, Fiona McKenzie and his colleague that is Nick and how she, they they were capturing the issues and the conversations that were going on uh, through the silent listener and we were able to see that uh, actually they have been able to capture a lot of things and Dr. Folabi, by the end of the day, had to open up to Fiona and tell him, by the way, the guide that you hear is me, and I'm the one who is doing all the things that uh, your, your, your young man, Nick, has been able to capture. And today we are looking at chapter 11, and we are coming closer to the summit. And we are coming to, to a point where we will be able to understand why have there been all these arrangements? Why was it important? And will actually the path alpha, path of, uh, way omega that we've been talking about, will it be able to be, uh, will it be be materialized or will it will it uh, finally come to pass? And so in chapter 11, we begin with uh, Pastor Chiamaka and uh, we see that um, he had this, something that had been planned about him even before the meeting began and he was supposed to to this, something that had been on the way because there was a small dinner that is on page 141, 142. There was a small dinner that had been arranged and already he had been told what to do when the dinner begins. So him, he's not aware that the dinner has been cancelled. And so he goes ahead with the plans at the pin, at the Pinnacle, uh, secure, uh, Pinnacle Hotel where he goes in and uh, he's cleared comfortably, of course, because he has what it takes. And he gets into the dining room and he's expecting to carry on the, the plan as it had been planned. But uh, we realized that um, the dinner was cancelled and therefore he's not able to, 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 to implement it. But what is I find very funny on page 141 is um, what he had planned to do. Uh, he says that... Um, would have went, waited patiently and until he gets to where his president is. And uh, when he gets there, he will extend his hand to shake, uh, to shake, to shake the hand of the president. And of course, the president naturally would also shake his hand. And then what would happen? Pastor Chiamaka would then have shaken the president's hand and kept shaking it until the man got tired. Who does that? Why would you even want to do that? What would he want to, uh, to achieve by that? Then he would have released his hand and asked him this question, Mr. President, heaven forbid. But uh, were, were Omega to come down to vote during the summit's debate tomorrow, which way would you go? Um, adopting or rejecting? That is what he had intended. And I'm keeping on thinking, how brilliant was that? Because if I was the president, I would first of all get upset that you're coming to shake my hand until I get tired. Then you ask me, will I vote for yes or no of way Omega? But thank God it didn't work because by the end of the day, the, the dinner was cancelled. And so that plan went off. And of course, he's there seated there feeling very unhappy that uh, he has not been able to, to he has not been able to, to achieve his objective. And he gets a phone call from, uh, from, uh, from Dr. Flav and of course, uh, his, uh, Dr. Fulabi is very excited. He's talking in a cheerful note and he's wondering what is there to cheer, to cheer one on. And then he's told that there will be a meeting in room 2059, the center wing of the Seamount Hotel. And therefore he should be there. So the pastor is wondering, so why, why, why are we meeting? Why are we meeting again? I thought two days ago, you said you'd not want to be known. You don't want us to know you. So suddenly you want to meet us. And of course, you'd expect Pastor Chamaka to be the one to raise those kind of issues. And so he's... Um, he says, fine, I will be there. And so the meet, there's a meeting that has been set uh, in, in uh, room 2059 for all of them to meet. And of course, the calls go on. Comrade Melusi, we see him on page 143. He's lying on his back, uh, the bed uh, on his back. He was daydreaming about his wife, Ziliza. 
and uh, he was um, relieving the moments and uh, how the wife, uh, just missing the wife, and uh, he has a photo that he carries with him, a photograph he carries with him all the time in his wallet. And uh, when he's, he remembers about the wife, he feels very bad. He feels very angry. And uh, actually, we, fr from here we learn that the killing of the wife happened 20 years ago. Actually, she was 49 years of age when this happened. And remember, we said that um, that. Uh, Comrade Melusi is around over 70, around 70 years. So if you add 49 plus uh, 20 years, that comes to around 69. And so therefore just around that time. And so for Melusi, he has allowed the image of the wife, the 49 year old woman to stick in his mind. The eyes, the beautiful eyes of the wife, he has not allowed age to, to uh, for her to, to go on with age. And uh, therefore he's, uh, he's continues to relieve the moments they had. And on page 144, we actually told Comrade Melusi returned the photograph after he got a call. He returned the photograph of his wife. To her now had come to 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 her to her, uh, to her now had come a mournful plea, all the more touching um, for having a face but not a voice. The man responsible for her death, she was begging wordlessly. Now must himself die. Comrade Melusi promised her that he would see to it. To underline his promise, he rose to his feet, stood at attention, executed a wobbly salute and intoned an oath. Come next day, he saw she would have her revenge. And what does that do? It helps us to have a, pre a premonition, a foreshadowing that we, are, we almost can predict that next day, there will be things that will go on because Comrade Melusi has vowed, has promised the person who killed the wife, tomorrow is the day that I will have her revenge. And actually he's even doing a ceremony for her. Stands attention, a salute, and uh, actually making an oath that I promised you I will deal with the person who killed you and tomorrow is the day to do that. And of course when he he's doing that, he gets a phone call and uh, he's invited for the meeting, the same meeting at, at 2059. And so then we go to Professor Kemani who is brushing his teeth Ready to uh, ready to go to bed, and the mirror. He's looking at himself in the mirror. I thought that is very interesting on page one forty four, where we are told his belly hung over his belt like a half sack, ha half empty sack, loose. He tried to suck it in. It stayed put. His face had wrinkles like a dry prune, loose. Two folds of skin ran on his left and right sides of his nose down to the left and right corners of his mouth. Loose. And everything for him was loose. He tried to smile them away. They refused to leave. The flesh under his chin hung and shook. Loose. Was was getting old a process of wholesale loosening. His mobile phone interrupted this analysis. Now that helps us to understand the physique, the physical appearance of Professor Kemani. Maybe uh, this man has really grown old. Remember, especially after the wife left, even the misery, the pain, the disappointment, when you're so depressed, you actually can get loose everywhere. And uh, Professor Kemani is, he has actually noted that he's actually loose, loose all over his body. And um, again, remember, he's also advanced in age, so it's allowed. With a phone call, there's a guide who is also inviting him for the meeting at room 259, the center wing. And finally, we have Engineer Tahir, who is also being invited for the meeting. Engineer is also obsessed. The Kemani is, it's funny, um, Kemani is obsessed about his loose body. Comrade Melusi is obsessed about the, 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 the late wife. And Engineer Tahir is also obsessed about his eye. He's actually just looking at his eye. And uh, he's still feeling, he's dealing with the lens and uh, how the artificial eye is looking like and how he doesn't like it and how he needs to you know he's just obsessed about this eye and when that is going on he gets a phone call and of course um he he gets to to be invited for the meeting at room 2059 and that is it and uh, the following um uh, the, 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 at that moment when they were supposed to meet, they meet and the Dr. Folabi has arrived and Mr. Longway is also in the meeting and now there's time for introduction and we realize that um, they all didn't know each other and so everybody and you can read page 146 where, where, where Mr. Longway is the one who introduces everyone and it's very funny how they, he introduces especially Pastor Chiamaka finally next to him is Pastor Chineke Chiamaka another Nigerian still based I believe at the Lagos branch branch of CIA and I think everybody thought it's another CIA not the one not not the church inside Africa and they snickered and make that church inside Africa and they laughed because maybe they were thinking about um 
the agency investigation agency that is uh, that is uh, not a church and of course now mr longway goes ahead to explain to them that is page 147 which is very important for us to note he explains to them why they are here and how they will go about it and um, um he let me re just read this because it is important he says that um first you are here because you see you see that no he's referring to all of them first you are here because you see that africa has problems whose solutions its present heads of state are simply not up to. Second, you are here because you believe Path Alpha will solve these problems, not Way Omega. Third, you are here because you have suffered ugly state abuse. You do not want to address it, mm, you, but you want to address Sorry. Finally, you are here because you want to address each of the above by making your head of state adopt, adopt Path Alpha, not Way Omega. He turned to Dr. Falabi. Dr. Falabi will now describe what you must do. So over to you, Dr. Falabi. He sat down. That part is important because we are able to see that um, the reason why they are here is for these reasons. There are reasons as to why Dr. Falabi, I mean, these four people are in the meeting. And of course, uh, Mr. Longway goes goes ahead to explain to them you're here because of one two three and of course calls dr falabi and dr falabi goes ahead to explain to himself and says i am abiola falabi previously known to you as to you only as your guide and they are they are like what do you mean you're kidding me it is impossible what do you mean you are our guide and the way you have harassed us and all that and of course they were not amused that why would you be, be be so so hidden all along and then you show up here telling us that you're the guide and he goes ahead to explain why he was hiding his identity and i think it's important for us to see that that is on page 147 uh, Dr. Falabi explained, I came to the summit as an advisor of the Way Omega, while you four came as the advocates of Path Alpha, a rival to Way Omega. Such being the case, I felt I could open, I could not openly work with you without appearing um, to undermine my official role here. Having studied both Path, uh, Path Alpha and Way Omega closely, I now feel duty bound to balance my views on each of these two documents in advice I will give to the summit. Do you see why? what I'm saying? The forehead's nodded. So do you forgive me? The forehead nodded again. So they were able to understand anyway. We understand why you 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 you, you did not introduce yourself. It's because of your double standards and you didn't want yourself to be to be known and uh, for you to be discovered that you're playing both, uh, both uh, you're, you're playing the heads of state who invited you to come and advise them. And so the meeting goes on and they explained why they will need to, what happens tomorrow when the meeting is going on. And that is on page 148. And they explained to that actually when we go in, the chair, uh, the, the, the president of Gambia is on who's supposed to be the host, but he has not, he has delegated that to the chair. And the chair therefore is aware what he's doing. He's aware what we are up to. And he says, because the new chair has up his sleeve a ploy, he calls it the trick, which is good for us. If he fails to lead the summit to a consensus as he most certainly will he will let another head of state propose that a committee convene to devise a method of eliminating the need for a consensus he wants a win-win result in which he wins in which he wins if he wins and and still wins if he loses that is the trick so of course they are wondering what exactly so what, what does that have to do with us with the trick and all that the consensus at the committee so what does that have to do with us and he said your work is at the speaker's microphone each one of you i will give you an opportunity to be at the speaker's microphone you need to prepare what to say and finally on page 149 let me read this for you so that you understand what they need to do in the summit let me put it this way imagine you had an opportunity to tell africa's head of state face to face the one most important thing you you ought you thought they ought to hear and you only have a minute or less in which to say what would you what would it be this is the golden opportunity you will have tomorrow an opportunity to mold the heart of your past into the wishes of a better future do not say it to me now go and think about it then say it um then say it to the summit tomorrow 
at the speaker's microphone. Now we know what the four, the four of them need to do tomorrow at the speaker's microphone. And so I think now as we carry on, I'm hoping that you're able to understand this uh, task better also, that you're able to understand the, the reason as to why these four are needed, What, how do they need to play themselves. And remember their task is only like a minute. They're only given a minute to speak their mind. They're told that you have a golden opportunity tomorrow to, to, to mold the heart of your past. Remember they have very many hearts uh, into your wishes for a better tomorrow, a better future. And imagine all these four men have so much they, they, they would want to do for a future of their countries. Say that tomorrow. And so they have been told, go home. I mean, go back to the hotel. And when we meet tomorrow, let's hear in front of the, all the heads of state, let's give you a minute to say what you have to think. It's, it's an enormous responsibility and task. And um, that is in chapter, um, chapter 11. We want to see tomorrow in chapter 12, whether that will happen, how will they carry themselves out? And so that is it in chapter 11. I want to hope that uh, you understand it better. And I'll see you in chapter 12. Chapter 12. Let's go to the summit in chapter 12. I'll see you around. Thank you for staying here.